Anchor your life to the inspiring words that will put a rainbow in your sky. Listen to Word and Songs, a program that will introduce you to the Word of Life and beautiful music to help you experience peace and consolation. Join the Daughters of St. Paul for half an hour of Word and Songs. Peace and blessings, dear friends in Christ. Sister Lines here of the Daughter of St. Paul is welcoming you to the fifth and final series of our reflection on depression and mental health here in our program, Word and Songs, nourishing your soul with the Word of God and inspiring you with music beating from the heart. I do hope and pray that the previous episodes of our program offer you some helpful tips on how you can deal with depression, sadness, despair, inner emptiness, and the likes yourself, and how you can save a life of a family member, a friend, or a colleague who might be in distress and going through difficult times. By listening with empathy to their stories of pains and sufferings, and by referring them to the right person who can offer professional help and spiritual guidance in their dilemma. Friends, if we truly care about the well-being of people around us, especially our family members, friends, and workmates. We need to practice sensitivity and mindfulness of how they are doing physically, emotionally, and mentally on a daily basis. We are now on the season of Lent, so we'll try to see how we can make sense of depression this Lenten season by learning from the experience of Deacon Jim Duherty, who underwent depression himself in the season of Lent. Before I give you that, may we listen to our first song. Oh, 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 
Deacon Jim shared, My Lent so far has consisted of an unrelenting depression that has been getting worse for months. My mounting anxieties and a sense of hopelessness have contributed to difficulty in Lenten prayer. I have tried different forms of prayer, and nothing seems to rouse me from my sadness. The only answer I have found is continually to resort to offering myself and my sufferings to Jesus Without holding anything back, I am broken, I keep telling him. Heal me if it is your will. I feel pain at an emotional level. At the supernatural level, I trust that this pain is being healed by Jesus in ways I cannot yet fathom. If I could touch you, I'd heal your broken palms. If I could hold you in my arms I'd call the soft breeze to caress your weary arms I'd call the moonbeam to dispel this dark as night If I could touch you If you'll just whisper in my ear The sadness weighing down your heart That no man sees If you just call me I would sing Oh flaming hope If I could hear you Oh, 
my doctor has adjusted my medication several times. A few days ago, the latest change improved my outlook a little. I'd like to think that my prayer would be more intense and focused if God just took away my suffering. I tell him, I just need some relief for a while and that I will be faithful regardless of my condition. I want to feel joy and hope again. But I suspect I need his suffering and depression so that my sinfulness and self-indulgence can be achingly burned away. I recognize an anger and a sense of inferiority in my depression, which requires me to give this to God as well. Emptying myself to God allows me the freedom to let go of some of this anger. God knows far better than me what will come from my pain and that it will have some benefit for me and perhaps for my family and others. I am with you In the rivers you shall not drown Walk through the fire and its flames will not consume you For I am God You're tuned in to Word and Songs, and this is still your friend, Sister Lines of the Door of St. Paul, sharing with you Deacon Jim Duherty's experience of depression in the season of Lent. Jim continues, As a permanent deacon, I am blessed that I can preach. In preparing my homily for the first Sunday of Lent, I found the Holy Spirit in the Gospel, also driving me out into the desert, where I encountered Jesus in His suffering. Jesus let me see, that I belong in the desert at this point with Him, so that I can face my sinfulness and depression with Him, and then give myself entirely to Him. As I preached that first Sunday of Lent, I briefly found some respite. I have noticed this pattern lately in my preaching. I feel sad before and after preaching, but during my preaching, I feel a joy and urgency which is forceful and driven by the Spirit. This first Sunday of Lent, I experienced a connection to God in my preaching, where I was able to enter into the consoling arms of Jesus. I could then authentically and joyfully urge those at Mass also to go into the desert to find themselves and Jesus more deeply. When I share this gospel message, I experience a relief with His taking on my sin and pain. 
I could see that he was withstanding the walls and viciousness of Satan as he took my temptations of pride and vanity and forgave me and exposed me to the simplicity of his burning love. I noted how empty and desolate the desert otherwise was. In the desert, we are unable to hide behind the lies and deceits of a culture of materialism and self-interest. In the bright and intense light of the desert, we see ourselves as we really are. We are given the choice of running out of the desert and leaving Jesus behind or staying with Jesus and trusting in His mercy, healing, and goodness. O Lord my God, teach my heart where and how to seek you. Teach my heart where and how to find you. My Lord, and I've never seen you. You've made me and remade me and bestowed on me all the good things I have. And still I do not know you. I was made O Lord my God Teach my heart Where and how To seek you Teach my heart Where and how To find you Cannot see you unless you teach me, or find you unless you show yourself to me. Let me seek you in my desire. Let me desire you in my seeking. Let me find you by my loving you. Now, let me love you when I find you. Teach me, Lord, teach my heart where and how to find you. For I cannot see you unless you teach me or find you unless you show yourself to me. Let me seek you in my desire. Let me desire you in my seeking. Let me find you by my loving you. Now, let me love you when I find you. Teach me, Lord, teach my heart where and how to find you. It was then that I decide I must stay with Jesus even if I feel worthless. Things only make sense when I am with Him. The Holy Spirit keeps driving me towards Jesus and the desert. I am tired and fatigued by the effort of being obedient to the Trinity. 
were the spiritual consolations that had been part of my life for many years. My spiritual director says to let my grief and sadness plow through me. Healing is never finished, he advised. Pain can be lessened through a trusting relationship with God and increasing spiritual maturity. I have to learn how to live with the remaining pain and suffering while always looking forward with hope towards the resurrection. Self-introspection is not always productive at a certain point in your spiritual life, my director told me. Don't hang on to the pain. Don't blame yourself for it, he advised. I realized I have to see God's love in everything. Every setback and suffering, as well as in future consolations, should they come. I cannot make sense of this emotional state in which I find myself. I cannot will it away. Is it a dark night of the senses? This dark night of the senses can only occur after we break habits of sin and acquire habits of virtue. My suffering seem to have some elements of the state of dark night of the senses, perhaps at the very beginning level. Melancholy, 
anxiety, and depression are often associated with a state of spiritual life except that these feelings should result in a purer desire for God. My desires have been somewhat purified, but I am still resistant to total surrender to God's will. I have always desired to be closer to God, even when I began more deeply to experience suffering. But I have never experienced such suffering at this new level before. I'll keep trusting in God, trying to pray and surrender myself to God's will. There you are, friends. I hope you learned something from the experience of Deacon Jim, how he dealt with depression by surrendering himself to the consoling arms of Jesus, asking Jesus to heal his pain and suffering. We, too, can unite our pain and suffering with that of our Lord Jesus, especially this season of Lent, in order to find meaning in our pain and suffering and make it redemptive. At this point, I'd like to acknowledge and thank the source of my sharing. From the article of Deacon Jim Duherty, entitled Depression in Lent, An Unsought Penance, published in www.catholicstand.com. Thank you very much for the insightful reflection. Likewise, a special thanks to Jesuit Music Ministry, particularly all the composers, producers, and artists of the songs we featured in this program. Empty Space from God of Silence album. If I Could Touch You from Your Dwelling Place album. Be Not Afraid from Dwells God album. Teach My Heart from Something More album. Father Mercy from Sing of Him album. And In Him Alone from Stand By Me Still album for our final song. Thank you very much. If you like the songs we played in this program, they are available in CD. Just visit any Pauline's Media Center or St. Paul Bookstore nationwide. Or, if you are here in Mega Manila, just visit Tanging Yaman Store at the fifth level of SM Mega Mall in front of the chapel. To those of you who follow us in YouTube and Facebook, thank you for listening. Remember, Pauline's Radio PH is linking lives and healing hearts. And if you are searching for spiritual books and media materials that would help enrich your spiritual life, do visit any Pauline's Media Center nearest you or visit our website www.store.paulines.ph. I'm Sister Lines of Adorb St. Paul saying bye-bye for now. Thank you so much for keeping me company. Join me again next week for the Lenten episode of Word and Songs. Have a meaningful Lenten journey. God bless us all.
just heard Word and Songs. This program was brought to you by the Daughters of St. Paul, 